This is a test of the emergency alert system. This is Sheriff Robert Luna. I am speaking to you from the Los Angeles County Emergency Operations Center, where we manage the response to major emergencies. Many broadcasters have agreed to deliver emergency information. From ABC7, this is Eyewitness News. A man was stabbed to death in Marina Del Rey this morning. I'm Alex Cheney, live at the scene, coming up. A dangerous stretch of road in Riverside will be the focus of a town hall today. It is the same stretch of road that an eight-year-old was killed earlier this month. And a record-breaking holiday weekend for U.S. airports. TSA releases the number of screenings post-pandemic. Good morning. This is Eyewitness News at 11 a.m. live on ABC7, Hulu, and wherever you stream. I'm Giovanna Lara. Philip is on assignment today. Police are investigating after a stabbing left one person dead. Eyewitness News reporter Alex Cheney is live in Marina Del Rey with with more on what happened. Alex, disturbing. Yeah, Giovanna, that's right. This is a very disturbing story. So this whole story begins at about 6 a.m. this morning when two people who are just walking by the sidewalk here uh, over on Washington Ave in Marina Del Rey noticed a dead body on the ground. They called 911, and what they found was a man with multiple stab wounds in a pool of blood outside of one of the homes just here. You can see the crime scene is behind sort of that uh, white canopy that they have going on here. So I did speak to LAPD right now. There are more questions than answers. Uh, we don't know uh, who this man was. We don't know who the person may have uh, attacked him was. Uh, there is a house right in front of this area. That house is unrelated. It seems that this was just a random act in front of a random piece of sidewalk here in Marina Del Rey. Uh, here's what LAPD had to say as they are still investigating this heinous crime. So around 6.05 this morning, our Pacific Division officers got a 911 call of a body laying in the pathway here at the 600 block of Washington Boulevard. Some passerbys saw the body, called 911, and said that the man was facing downward in a pool of blood. Uh, when officers got here, they found the victim, only described as a male in his 40s, uh, suffering from multiple stab wounds. There's a trail of blood on the sidewalk, sidewalk actually leading up to the home uh, in this area. Uh, so for now, traffic conditions. If you're on Washington Ave, they actually have it shut down if you're trying to go south, but you can still go north. Uh, this scene is expected to stick around for the next few hours. Reporting here live in Marina Del Rey, I'm Alex Cheney, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Alex, thank you. A town hall is set for today in Riverside after a deadly head-on crash that sent both drivers and multiple children to the hospital. Now some say more needs to be done to protect drivers on that dangerous stretch of road. Eyewitness News reporter Jaisha Patel joins us live from Riverside with the details. I think us coming in numbers and community members say speeding is a huge problem on Arlington and Stover Avenue in Riverside. The death of an eight-year-old after a head-on crash has shaken local community members up. Their concerns have now prompted a town hall meeting happening tonight. There's generational concerns. I mean, this has been going on, like I said, for 20, 30 years. passed away and his 10 year old sister and 16. Dark gray Nissan Sentra and man in a white Honda was coming around a curve and lost control. People signal say they want the city to do something about this. A traffic signal has been approved for the intersection, but the city estimates it'll be finished and operational by October, which leaves many locals wondering if more accidents will happen before then. They also say there needs to be more measures taken to stop speeding. The light pole itself is not going to stop these accidents from happening. We need other safety preventatives leading, leading up to this light pole. The town hall meeting is happening at La Sierra Senior Center tonight at 6. Council members, public works and others are expected to be there tonight. We reached out to Riverside Police and they say there's no update on the victim's conditions or the cause of the accident, but they say they'll be at the town hall tonight. In Riverside, Jay Patel, ABC7 Eyewitness News. A 
woman who went missing while on a cross-country road trip to Orange County is believed to have been spotted in Northern California. Eyewitness News reporter Irene Cruz is live in the studio this morning with more from worried family members. Irene. Giovanna, they're hanging on to any hope they can get. Authorities say that missing woman may have been photographed in Redding while selling her cell phone at a Walmart on Saturday. Nikki Alcaraz's brother Josh speaking out this morning. He says she's 100% in danger and that it's unlike the 33 year old mother to not talk to her children. He adds Nikki has known her boyfriend Tyler Stratton for 15 years. She left Tennessee on a road trip with Tyler in her Jeep. They were supposed to visit her uncle in Orange County. She vanished after an alleged assault incident in New Mexico. A witness says Tyler punched Nikki in the face. A sheriff's report shows her black eye. Stratton says he was also hit, but neither pressed charges. Her family last heard from her weeks ago, May 9th, a text saying she was in Arizona, still going to California. Her brother now pleading for her to come home. I immediately tried calling her and went straight to voicemail. I sent texts that are still undelivered. She always has her phone, so you know that's when it was really concerning. You know, Nikki, we're, we're not going to give up. You know, if you're in some kind of trouble, Everybody loves you, you know, get in contact with us somehow, even if even if you have to ask somebody to email us from, you know, out of his view or whatever the case may be, find a way to get in touch and we'll come save you. Yeah, they're incredibly worried about her. Now, Tyler has an unrelated arrest warrant out of Tennessee tied to a theft charge. Nikki's family now begging the public to keep an eye out for them. Giovanna. Irene, thank you. We have breaking news. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter has been diagnosed with dementia. 95-year-old Mrs. Carter continues to live at home with her husband in the home he built in Plains, Georgia, back in 1961. Plains is about two and a half hours outside of Atlanta. The Carters are the longest ever married uh, presidential couple, having wed in 1946. At 98, Jimmy Carter is the oldest living former president and the longest lived former president in U.S. history. Turning to your weather now, the May gray continues, but there's some hope for a little sunshine. Brianna? Yeah, we are hopeful that it's going to be coming by the weekend, yeah. but there's still a small chance that that may not happen. Although right now we are planning on that happening, so we will keep you updated. But all these low pressure systems that are kind of spinning up these very deep marine layers, causing a little bit of drizzle, some light rain out there as well. They're going to be close by. So depending how close they get to us, that could change by the weekend. As of now, we are looking at a warm up though. So we'll keep you posted on that. You get a gray view here over Malibu. So maybe gray is continuous on through the end of May and then it is going to turn to June gloom this week. So this is going to continue the next few days. It's about 54 degrees over into Malibu. And then as you take you over into Palmdale, a really beautiful shot here where we have some clouds out there as well. But we're going to see not only marine layer clouds, but also some high clouds too, and some low clouds, kind of a mixture of a lot of it as that low pressure moves on through and skirts over us this afternoon. That's also going to cause the potential for some thunderstorms too, mostly just for LA Ventura County Mountains. But don't be surprised if you're up there and you do get some light rain. We're already seeing some spotty areas. Temperature is cool. It's cloudy out there. We'll let you know what we're looking at, though, when we get a little bit closer to the weekend. That's coming up in the seven day. Jovan, I'll send it back to you for now. Okay, Brianna, thank you. Well, airports were packed this Memorial Day weekend. The TSA says it screened almost 9.8 million people over the four day holiday. That is up about 300,000 passengers and the same holiday weekend back in 2019. The busiest day was Friday with about 2.74 million travelers, making it the highest post pandemic single day record. Just ahead, a horrific cruise trip passengers thought would never happen. Shocking video shows the